Assailed by silence he descends, lost suddenly to air and sunburned friends, and wholly under water now. He plies his strength against the element that slows all probings. Beneath the clear, turquoise blue waters of the Aegean Sea, there's a world that not many people have seen for themselves. It's an underwater garden. It's a spectacular array of colour. And it's filled with plants and animals that are especially adapted to live in the hidden depths of the marine world. There are forests of tree-shaped corals which come in shades of yellow, red, orange and purple. And they form the backdrop for the garden. But the soft corals, their gently swaying branches and polyps, the sea fans and the sea pens, they all move in rhythm with the currents of the warm Aegean Sea. All corals, as well as sea pens and sea fans, are described as colonial, meaning that several individual polyps are connected to make up the organism or colony. Sea pens have one polyp that has been transformed into the large stem, and other transparent polyps make up the feathery plume of the organism. In order to feed this colony, the tentacles of soft coral polyps capture tiny planktonic animals darting through the water. The world below the brine. Forests at the bottom of the sea. The branches and leaves. Sea lettuce. Vast lichens. Strange flowers and seeds. The thick tangle. Openings and pink turf. Different colors. Pale gray and green. Purple. White and gold play of light through the water. Sea anemones add a splash of colour to the sea garden. They look like flowers and can be red, green, orange, pink, purple, brown, white or indeed any combination of these colours. Although anemones look like plants, they act as animals and they eat other animals. What looks like their flower petals are in fact tentacles surrounding a rather large mouth. These tentacles, waving, undulating in the garden, are equipped with stinging cells that are able to paralyze or even to stun nearby animals. The captured prey is then brought to the mouth and eaten up. Sponges in brilliant rainbow colors cling to rocks and reefs throughout the Aegean. Sponges are also deceptive marine inhabitants. Although they don't look at all active, they actually spend the whole day just pumping water and food particles in and out of their bodies. From the hardy trumpet sponge to the delicate glass sponge, these creatures are not only beautiful inhabitants of the garden, but also provide food for many other creatures in the garden. Fish, worms, sea slugs, even sea turtles. The sea keeps eternal whisperings around desolate shores and with its mighty swell gluts 10,000 caverns till the spell of Hecate leaves them their old shadowy sound. Often tis in such gentle temper found that scarcely will the very smallest shell be moved for days. There are many small creatures that live in the sea garden, like this white sabellid worm that has built a tube for its home. If you look closely, you can see its tentacles extend from the tube to search for food in the surrounding sea. Another inhabitant, the striking black Benelia worm, lives under a rock or in the sediment. It comes out only to search for food, using its two-pronged proboscis to sweep over the surface of the sediment. Elsewhere, 
Red and yellow sea stars move slowly over the sea floor, using their sticky tube feet, always looking out for an unsuspecting food item. Sea stars add patches of color and light to the shady corners of the garden. Nutty branks, which are also called sea slugs, are vividly colored mollusks, rather like clams, except for the fact that they don't have shells. The transparent, finger-like serrata on their backs dance to the rhythm of the underwater currents in the sea garden. Dumb swimmers are among the rocks. Coral, gluten, grass, rushes, and the element of the swimmers. Sluggish existences, grazing there suspended, or slowly crawling, close to the bottom. There are several larger creatures that call the sea garden home. One of these is the spiny lobster. It usually shelters in caves and the crevices of rocky reefs during the day, but emerges at night to feed. It has a hard outer shell with many sharp spines, and this helps protect it from predators. Its very long antennae are used to help it sense and find its food. It also has eyes at the ends of movable stalks that act like the periscope of the submarine. Six pairs of small limbs around the mouth beat the water feverishly to bring tasty morsels of food into its mouth. The antisocial octopus lives alone in small caves and dens on the sea bottom. Because it can change the color of its wrinkled leathery skin, it blends in easily with its surroundings. The octopus has eight arms lined with suction cups that it uses to capture its favorite food items lobsters and crabs. On silver waves, I sit and sing, and then the fish lie listening. Then, sitting on a rocky stone, I comb my hair with fish's bone. The whilst Apollo with his beams doth dry my hair from watery streams. All the same, no garden is complete without plants, and the sea garden is no exception to this rule. In the marine world, there are also meadows, meadows of seagrass. In the Aegean, meadows of Posidonia cover the floor of the shallow waters, providing a perfect refuge for many different kinds of fish. But here, schools of swallowtail sea perch prefer the rocky ledges of the underwater garden where they are swimming, darting around, feeding. The brilliant colors and striking camouflage patterns of the scorpion fish enable it to lie still. Although it's usually a slow moving, undulating swimmer, it certainly can move quickly when it wishes in order to ambush its prey. The ribbon fish is an open sea fish that is not seen very frequently. Its long, tapered, fragile body is covered with silvery skin instead of fish scales. Here we see a previously unrecorded event. The astonishing courtship ritual of the ribbon fish, which took place at a depth of about 85 meters. This beautiful and intricate dance gives the effect of streamers swirling in the watery depths of the Aegean. Under the stained glass surface, sunlight falls in shafts, spread eagled. In this cathedral, I fly over valleys in spring bloom. On the sea's marriage bed, glowing fish thread themselves into veils of bright beads. I kneel in pillows of sand, and they weave a groom's jewels around my head. There are some underwater environments in the Aegean which are quite unique and in which are found rare plants and animals. For instance, in the shallow waters of the coast of the volcanic island of Milos, the presence of hydrothermal vents has created a completely distinctive environment. There are white bacterial mats, 
there are calcium carbonate chimneys and the ever-present bubbles of gas escaping from the Earth's underwater crust make an eerie underwater world of their own, where hot, sometimes scalding water as high as 100 degrees Celsius gushes from cracks in the seafloor. There aren't many animals that can survive the high temperatures and harsh conditions around hydrothermal vents, and the ones that do survive here are very specialised. But even in this inhospitable environment, some organisms can survive and even thrive. How do they do it? Some mollusks, like cyclopes, graze in the bacteria. And others, such as clams, flourish in the sulfur-rich sediments surrounding the vents. Many hydrothermal vent sites have fields of lush green algae surrounding them, because the water pumped out with the gas bubbles is so rich in nutrients. So here too, there are sea grass meadows swaying in the warm currents. There are larger creatures too, like these dolphins, which frolic in the sea gardens of the Aegean. Dolphins, like other mammals, marine or terrestrial, are warm-blooded and bear living young. They have a layer of blubber under the skin to keep them warm during the winter when even in the Aegean there are cool sea temperatures. A dolphin can dive as deep as 300 meters in its search for fish, shrimp, eels and squid. Dolphins are social animals and often swim together in the open sea in groups, sometimes a few, sometimes many more. They love to follow boats of all sizes and give dazzling graceful water ballet performances, much to the delight of the onlookers. But though the sea gardens of the Aegean appear to be idyllic and unspoiled, even here, in the depths of the sea, mankind has left its mark. These lovely but fragile gardens are facing threats on several fronts, Abandoned fishing gear in the seafloor continues to fish. That is to say, the gear goes on trapping animals that cannot escape and are left there to die. Plastic is one of the worst pollutants because it takes years, perhaps decades, to decompose and so it accumulates on the muddy bottom, in underwater craters and in the cracks and crevices of the sea garden. Humans have had other, more insidious impacts on the seafloor. The trawls of fishing vessels produce ruts in the soft bottom sediments, and this destroys important habitats for many marine plants and animals. In some areas, intensive fish farming has added layers of uneaten food and waste to the sea bottom. This alters the habitat and can smother bottom-dwelling organisms. Many are now paying attention to this unique underwater world and are setting up programs and developing technologies to help to preserve it. New fishing gear is being designed and tested to try to reduce the bycatch of undersized fish and untargeted species. Marine protected areas are being created. Fish farms are being monitored closely to decrease their impacts on the sea bottom. It is possible for humans and the sea to live in harmony, so that the diversity, beauty and mystery of the sea gardens of the Aegean will be preserved forever. that walking on the dark sea sand the old bride of the wind
What is that staring out of the weedy pool? The newborn monster in its coal. What is that eerie chanting from the foam? The mermaid's gardening song. What is that shadow floating on the water? The fish king's daughter. Who bears those candles down by the sea's curled rim? The children going home. The sea is asleep. The calm beloved by the west wind spreads out over the broad water where the ships pass. 